Hey, so there's this really interesting term going around called carbon sequestration, aka carbon farming. So I wanted to find out more about it, and more importantly, teach you about it. So let's talk about it. Climate change is a thing. You're probably on one side of the issue or the other, but there is no denying that mankind is having an impact on the environment. With the burning of fossil fuels for hundreds of years, the temperature of the planet has risen. It's actually risen about two degrees Fahrenheit since 1900. While this might not sound like a huge change, its effect can be felt all around the world and has some experts worried. Many scientists and governments are taking steps to reduce emissions by pushing renewable energy, both new and pre-existing. Within the agriculture industry, a new process has popped up called carbon sequestration or carbon farming. Carbon farming can be defined as a natural or artificial process by which carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere. This practice could have a dramatic impact on the agriculture industry and its effect on the environment. But before we learn how farmers might actually farm carbon, let's break down greenhouse gases and their main contributors. Greenhouse gases are any gas in Earth's atmosphere that trap heat. More greenhouse gases equal higher temperatures in the atmosphere. Examples of these gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. Here are some of the causes of those greenhouse gases. CO2, mostly from burning of fossil fuels like oil, gas, and coal. Next is CO2 from land use, which is caused by deforestation and land clearing. Methane, produced through things like production of coal, natural gases, and oil, also from agricultural practices like livestock manure and decaying organic matter. Nitrous oxide is a result of any fossil fuel being burnt. Part of the nitrogen that is in the fuel and surrounding air gets oxidized, creating nitrous oxide. Emissions include energy like coal power plants, industrial processes, and waste management. This issue of climate change is something that impacts every country around the world, no matter how much each country actually contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. The amount of CO2 in the air is measured in tons. To better understand what one ton of CO2 looks like, imagine a 27 square foot cube. This cube is one ton of CO2. Now try imagining 37 billion of these cubes. Each year, the world emits around 37 billion tons of CO2. The top contributors are as follows, China with 30%, United States with 15%, India 17%, and a lot of other countries contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. Now worldwide, here are the sectors that have the biggest impact on greenhouse gas emissions. Electricity with 25%, which is the burning of coal, natural gas, and oil for electricity, agriculture and forestry and other land use, which is 24%. This is a result of ag crops, livestock, and deforestation. This does not include CO2 captured from ecosystems, which is reported by the EPA as 20%. Buildings, 6%, which is caused by heating or cooking in home uses. Transportation is 14%, which is fossil fuels being burnt for cars, trains, planes, and boats. 95% of the energy in this industry comes from the burning of fossil fuels. Industry, 21%, which is a result of fossil fuels being burnt on-site facilities. And other energy, 10%. Here in the United States, we are the second highest contributor to greenhouse gases only behind China. We total about 6 billion metric tons per year, which has decreased by about 5 million metric tons over the past 15 years. Here's a breakdown of our greenhouse gas emissions by sector. Residential and commercial with 31%, emissions from businesses and homes burning fossil fuels for electricity, heat, and certain products containing gases and handling of waste. Industry is 30%, burning fuels for production as well as emissions. Transportation is 29%, which is the burning of fossil fuels for cars, trucks, planes, ships, you know the whole deal. And lastly is agriculture, with 10% of gas emissions from livestock, soils, production, and much more. This offsets 11% because of land use and forestry. You can see that although agriculture gets a bad rap here in the United States for its impact on the environment, other industries like transportation and residential energy generate far higher amounts of greenhouse gases. That being said, there is a lot we can do to reduce our impact on the environment. Now in the agriculture industry, both here in the US and around the world, there are some key causes of greenhouse gas emissions. These include soil management, processes like fertilization, irrigation, drainage, cultivation, and tillage and livestock manure all have key impacts. When a farmer plows their fields to prepare for the next crop, they usually break up the soil, AKA tillage, which releases carbon into the air, which then mixes with oxygen, causing CO2. Another one is anetric fermentation. Pretty much this is cow farts. 
Cows are ruminants, meaning they have four stomachs that break down their food. This digestive process creates methane and once, you know, farted or burped out by cows, releases methane to the atmosphere. The next one is manure management. Most livestock operations store their animal manure somewhere to be later used as a natural fertilizer for crops. When stored, however, this waste decomposes and emits gases like methane and nitrous oxide. Electricity is another source. Most CO2 emissions in agriculture are related to electricity use on site. Now, agriculture is a unique industry as it can both generate and capture carbon. And capturing carbon would be one of the answers in reducing the industry's impact on the environment. So again, what is carbon sequestration? Again, the definition is a natural or artificial process by which carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere and held in a solid or liquid form. Some experts in the agriculture space have referred to this practice as carbon farming. The main component in farming carbon is with plants, obviously. Carbon is important to plants in that it helps them during photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants use energy from the sun to create food from carbon dioxide and water. That energy is then used to make new leaves, roots, stems, and other plant parts. Once that plant dies, and if it remains in the soil, it will leave carbon for future plants to make use of. As farmers know, soil health is an important aspect of any crop, and having high amounts of carbon in the soil has been shown to improve both crop yields and overall quality. The carbon can also help the soil in terms of better quality organic matter, help with water retention, structure of the soil, and providing more nutrients for plants. So by now, you might be wondering how exactly farmers might be able to farm carbon. In theory, it's actually a fairly simple concept. Practices that would help farmers capture more carbon include no-till, which is farming without tillage of the soil. This method reduces the amount of soil disruption that would otherwise release carbon into the air. Cover crops, which is the planting of crops that cover soil rather than for harvest. These crops manage soil erosion, soil quality, water quality, weeds, pests, and much more. After a cash crop is harvested, a cover crop is planted for the sole purpose of energizing the soil. Before the next cash crop season, farmers would then cut the crops, preferably without tillage, and leave the remnants to decompose in the soil to add even more nutrients. Another one is compost application. Compost or decomposed organic matter like leaves, twigs, animal manure, and some food scraps. This compost can act as a natural slow release fertilizer and can eliminate weeds and diseases. Another one is crop rotation, which is the growing of different crops in the same area at different times. This increases soil health as many plants use different mixes of nutrients in the soil. Rotating crops helps maintain an even amount of nutrients, which is key for plant health. For example, if one crop releases nitrogen into the soil and takes up phosphorus, the next crop should release phosphorus and take up nitrogen to balance the amount of nutrients in the soil. Studies have shown that these practices have not only captured more carbon dioxide from the air, it also helps farmers improve their crops in terms of health, yield, grow more nutrient-dense food, and increase water holding capacity in the soil. It also helps create an extra income in the form of carbon credits. Here is some interesting math behind carbon farming, like how much we could possibly capture and how much farmers could make off of carbon farming. An acre of agricultural land can sequester about 2.6 tons of carbon dioxide a year. Total farmland worldwide is around 12 billion acres, which could potentially offset about 37 billion tons of carbon, which is almost equal to the 37 billion tons a year. Some experts think this could offset sectors that don't really have an alternative fuel source like planes or ships. Another key factor that can help reduce CO2 in the atmosphere are forests. While not all forests are for agricultural purposes, both native forests and timber farms can have a dramatic impact on absorbing carbon. Data from 2016 showed that U.S. forests offset around 9% of the nation's greenhouse gases. Global absorption of forests are about 2.5 billion tons per year, thanks from NASA's study in 2014. The Amazon rainforest captures about 2.2 billion metric tons of CO2, which is 5% of the global emissions. Now in terms of a paycheck, farmers won't exactly get rich, but they can make a decent profit if they switch to carbon farming techniques and if their state or country offer carbon credits. The price of carbon credits varies, however, from $15 to $30 per ton of carbon. Not all farms are the same, and not all soil can capture the same amount of carbon, though, so their mileage will vary in terms of both how much they can capture and how many credits they receive. As for carbon credits in other industries, oil, coal, and gas companies receive about $50 in credits when they sequester one ton of carbon. So what do farmers think of carbon farming? 
Now the process of implementing all these strategies sounds simple to someone not on a farm, but in practice can be difficult depending on the farm's region, equipment, environment, costs, and much more. Some regions around the United States have been using cover crops for decades, while others have growing seasons that are too short to use cover crops, as their crash crops are practically grown year-round. Likewise, some farms have been using no-till practices for years and have seen great results, while others struggle to switch the method due to the cost of new equipment. While grants are available, they are often limited and super competitive. Another key factor is weather. Of course, weather varies per region, but it also is unpredictable. What might start out as a perfect growing season may quickly turn into a rainy season that sees reduced yields. While it might seem like a few simple solutions, these carbon farming techniques are not one size fits all. And that's an issue that the general population won't realize at first glance. But carbon farming might be the solution to reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, but more realistically, it is one of many steps we all can do in order to reduce our impact on the environment. So that is what carbon sequestration is, AKA carbon farming. What do you think? Do you think it's kind of a cool technique that farmers can do? Or do you think we need more answers to kind of solve agriculture's impact on climate change? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, if you wanna learn more, check out our interview, which I'll link it below with Mitchell Hora of the Fieldwork Podcast, which we actually had on a few weeks ago. So check that out if you wanna learn a little bit more about Mitchell and his work with carbon sequestration and all that really neat stuff. So anyway, hope you like this video. We'll hopefully get some more kind of cooler ones like this going. So enjoy it and thanks.